YouTube, this is Bubs Comics coming at you with a quick comic haul. Today we're going to start off with a Spider-Man haul uh, from a recent con that I went to. Uh, so first up is a little like photo cell that I picked up. Uh, so what these were, uh, this came in Spider-Man, I think there was a Spider-Man like DVD combo pack that, that came out. And they had these little like Spider-Man collectible type things in with them. So I picked this up. Very happy to have this one. This is going to be an all Spider-Man haul. Uh, so pretty cool little little kind of photo cell. It's not an original cell, although it is a, an actual, um, you know, strip. But they gave those out. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, picked that up for a buck. Can't go wrong for a dollar. Uh, to complete that little set, another dollar item. Here is a lithograph that came in that same set. Signed by uh, John Romita and John Romita Jr. And it has a little placard on the back there. You can pause that and read that if you want. But uh, these these both came out of the same box of um, memorabilia that they sent with the DVD packs. So that's not an original. So that's a lithograph signature. So I didn't know what it was, but when I saw it for a dollar, I was like, well, I'm not going to leave that behind for a dollar. Plus, my comic room is kind of overflowing with stuff right now. So some, some things are getting slowly moved into my office at work. Uh, things that are less valuable but still pretty cool. So these might be a couple of things that make the cut uh, to my work office. So there you go. All right, let's roll right into it. Uh, I picked up uh, Marvel Team Up 141. So as many of you know, this is tied for uh, with 252 with Amazing Spider-Man 252 for the first appearance of the black suit. Now sometimes people will say that Marvel Superhero Secret Wars uh, number eight is first appearance of the black suit but that's actually the first in um, chronological order of the book you know so that's that's in the story that's the first appearance you know in the origin but this is actually in production in a in a publication you're looking at amazing spider-man 252 and marvel team up 141 pretty solid copy of the book a little bit of stress around the staples and a big spine crease right there a spine tick right there but other than that pretty good book picked this up for 10 bucks uh, right now these are flying off the shelves and uh, people are really picking these up and I I attribute of course some people have said well some youtubers are shouting them out pretty hard I, that really doesn't concern me uh, to me the biggest thing that has brought attention to this book has been um, the amazing spider-man 252 uh, where CGC is putting on the slab um, and I have one I can I can show it to you real quick uh, so what they're doing is they're putting on the slab in the notes that uh, it ties with Marvel Team Up 141 as the first appearance of the black costume. So whenever someone, I think when people are getting these books pretty hot and heavy slabbed around when the Venom movie came out, and then they were all returning with that note on them saying that there was uh, another book out there basically. Everyone's like, oh, well, that's the first appearance of the black suit. There's another book. Marvel team up 141. So I, I really attribute that to the, um, the the rise in this book to that being one of the most affordable um, books that have the black suit in it in that group of comics that include the black suit, including uh, Spectacular Spider-Man um, number 90, I believe, with the black head on it. So anyway, great book to have. If you can still find it for under thirty dollars or so, I think it's a it's an easy pickup. You should be grabbing those all day. Uh, next, we have another big book I've been looking for all year. Totally psyched to have this. Uh, I just can't believe I, I actually came across an affordable copy. Uh, and that's Amazing Spider-Man 194, the first appearance of Black Cat. So, <laughs> I'm telling you. So, <clears throat> in a previous video, I don't know when this will, um, when I'll publish this video, but it could have been uh, in my last video or so, I talked about a... Uh, con buying tips or dealer buying tips 
So here is an, another exact example of the tip that I gave last time, which was to, um, if you find a dealer that has multiple copies of the same book, especially if they're all priced for the same price, which happens, then you can usually wheel and deal. First of all, you're not alleviating them of their only copy. So especially where I was going to this con early and I was the, literally one of the first 20 people in the door at this con. So, you know, I was getting to see this book before anybody else. Well, he's got two other of this book available. One is slabbed. It was a low grade slab. It was like a, I think a seven or something like that of this book. And he had it for 150. Then he had this same book again for 150 and then and then this book here for 150 so had three copies of the same book for 150 one of them slab it was a cbcs slab which i don't care for too much but that's another story so i was like you know that's that's crazy you know <laughs> this guy's asking the same price for all three books not only that but the slab copy i could see 154 but this book is somewhere around it's one of those still affordable keys it's somewhere hovering around 100 bucks uh to me you can get a mid to high grade copy of this book anywhere from eight to an eight you know maybe a nine uh for a hundred dollars uh raw so when you start getting into slab tour ter territory now you're between one and two hundred depending on the quality of the slab the company and the grade but to get this book raw is is you know starting to pick up a lot of heat and i haven't been able to steal this one like i usually like to steal books uh until finally i came across this dealer he had three copies of it and he was asking all the same and so as i said in my tip i pulled all three copies and i started going over condition which was really great because he already had a slab copy and it was uh, and it was the best of the three so i was like okay then he had this one and another one he had 150 on them both and i noticed right here if you can see that is a little bit of a tear now that tear doesn't bother me at all uh it's nothing about that bothers me <laughs> so um and it's got a few spine ticks but to get a appearance of the first black hat and the interior is really good too nice white pages so i was like look if you got 150 on this one uh let's see what we can talk well the guy pulls out a price guide and let me tell you right now anytime somebody's pulling out a uh, price guide i get excited um and the reason i get excited about price guides if everyone's like oh gpa this and yeah whatever uh when it comes or fair market value but when it comes down to it when you come across a dealer or a shop owner that's using a price guide that's gold because 90% of the books are going to be overpriced in that price guide, which is unfortunate for the dealer. But about 10% of the books in that price guide are hugely undervalued, and you can get them for half the price because they don't keep up with modern trends. This is a book that's on the rise, and those publications are put out like once a year. So it can't possibly be keeping up with a book that's on the rise. It's only going to keep up with well-established, long-time keys, and even then it may not be keeping up with the price of that book like this one. I mean, this is a long time key, but it has been on the rise lately and kind of got out of reach the last couple of years for, you know, to be a cheap book. So anyway, here's a uh, 194. I ended up picking it up for 45 bucks. Super stoked with that. And that was after going over the condition, uh, both of us agreeing that it was somewhere around a 4.5. Uh, and I don't know, it may have a few more creases, may not be a 4.5. I'm not the best at the, the middle grades are really hard for me. The low grades are easy, the high grades are easy, but anytime you get between that 3.5 to like 5.5 five range, they all kind of look the same. And I think on any given day, the grader, you know, is going to kind of push it one way or the other. I see a lot of examples of books like that, but a lot of times those don't get graded because they're in the mid-range. Mid so anyway, there you go, 45 bucks for that amazing Spider-Man 194. I don't always say the price of books. I only paid 10 bucks for that. I don't, I don't always tell you the price that I paid for books, but I think when you go to a con, um, it's kind of important to know what con prices are because that's completely different than eBay. Um, and people will say, oh, GPA, I think GPA is such a, um, such a big lie. That's funny because I've, I've seen entire posts and rants on Facebook about how GPA is a thing. Yes, it's a thing. And for people who agree on what GPA is and fair market value, that's great. But all of that really is only about online sales. It really only gears you towards what a book is worth if you're buying it on eBay or on Heritage Auction or something like that. Once you step out into the real world and you're negotiating with someone in a real environment, the dealers who stick to GPA and fair market value don't sell their books. They just don't. Nobody buys it for that. 
It's very, very rare, unless it's a super rare book or a super high value book. And even then, people are looking for deals in person. So, you know, you can stick to fair market value in GPA if you're selling online. I think it's a perfectly good tool. But in what I would call the hunting world or the real world, where you're buying, finding books in the wild or at cons or anytime, anytime you're dealing face to face with someone and buying their book and you can hold the book and look at it and really tell what the condition is, then uh, GPA and fair market value is out the window. Now it all comes down to how much money do I have in my pocket and how much does the dealer need to let go of this book. And that's the only two things that matter. So anyway, uh, next we have a huge grail for me. Uh, and so I picked up this uh, Amazing Spider-Man 33. So I paid $10 for this book. And I had no idea that I was gonna come across this book for $10. Um, it was a wall book. The guy had, uh, I think he was wanting 40 for it on the wall. And uh, I worked him all the way down to 10 bucks, went over every single page of this book with him, counted up all the dings and dents and problems with it. Uh, basically, it's got a couple of coupons cut out of the in interior. It has a little like smudge there in the dead center that you can't really see in the Mylar, but if you take it out, you can really see it. Uh, this is a huge Jack Kirby, uh, I'm not sorry, Jack, uh, Steve Ditko cover. Uh, this represents his last work on the title. Um, the final chapter. This is, if you're going to get a, a Steve Ditko book uh, in the Spider-Man run, it's going to be 33 or less. So this one is my introduction to the early run. It's the first book I have of that series um, of 1 through 33. Super happy to have it. As you know, 1 is out of reach for a lot of people. And a lot of the books in this run are affordable. Uh, but this classic cover and, of course, the story as you get into the interior of it, it's like got eight panels of just him trying to get out of there. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, great book, very uh, iconic cover and an iconic story uh, showing the, the strength of Spider-Man really being his, his morality and his will to survive. Um, it's just his perseverance in this book is, is amazing. So I highly recommend this book. Anyone out there, you can pick it up for 10 bucks. You're crazy not to. Um, like I said, it's got a lot of condition issues, it's pretty rough, and there's not just one coupon cut out, there's like three or four coupons cut out of the book. None of it affects art or story, which is why I was getting it for the story and for the cover. So every book you have to decide, why do I want this book? For this book, I wanted it for the story and the cover, and for both, in this book, it's complete. So that makes me happy, and I, I probably won't upgrade this book for quite a while. Um, instead, I'm going to pick up a couple of more low grades of the early uh, Spider-Man uh, between one and 32 now. So got one off the list. So that's it. That's my big Spider-Man haul. I thank you all for uh, joining me. You know, again, go to the cons, work your magic, talk to dealers, be knowledgeable about the books, be more knowledgeable than anyone else there. The most you can learn, the better. And YouTube is great for that. You know, people, people sometimes say, oh, I'm, you know, haul videos are boring and hauls are, you know, it's like the lowest form of you know YouTube comic video but for me you know I stick with them because that's how I learned so much about uh, value condition grading and uh, really you know what what books are hot and it's really great to uh, and also to be exposed to books that I didn't even know existed and then all of a sudden I want them really bad right so YouTube haul videos are great for that and here's my old spider-man haul very very happy with it just some killer books so, all right, y'all, uh, that's it for me. Uh, you know, I'll catch you again. There'll be more haul videos coming. And um, thanks again for, for watching. And when you get done with all this, even if there's 14 coupons cut out of the book, crack it open and read it. Thanks. Bye.